Hi guys! Today I'm going to share what it's like to run a hydroponic greenhouse in the winter time. Behind me is the wood burner that they use to heat the greenhouse when it gets really cold out and uh, mom and dad cut all the wood themselves from trees on the property. They have a really neat setup. It's a log splitter that attaches to the end of the mini excavator. So I'll have to make a video on that. This is their other source of heat. Uh, this well sits towards the back of the property and it's always been a really good producer of oil and natural gas. I'm planning on doing a more in-depth video on the heating system with my dad here soon because he uh, put this all up himself. This is where the Beto bucket system will go here soon and that's another big winter project is getting that all started. So mom will start up uh, tomatoes here soon and then cucumbers, green beans, and probably a couple other things. So this pipe you're seeing down here at the bottom, this is the return pipe. And then these are the Beto buckets and they just sit on here just like that. This little hole goes down to the pipe and then mom will fill these up with a perlite vermiculite mixture. The Beto bucket system is actually divided into two sides. So there's this side over here and then this side and they each have their own nutrient tank. That way mom can customize the nutrients to suit whatever plant she has on either side of the greenhouse. Here's the little seedlings from the last video. They're in the nursery underneath the grow light because it's starting to get dark out. I forgot to show you guys the bobbins for the Beto bucket system and they're connected up to this uh, really strong wire. It's a metal wire and then the bobbins have these strings on them that come down and we, ta we attach the tomatoes to them because they grow like 20 feet by the end of the season. Mom keeps her production up pretty well during the winter time. Um, Unfortunately, we are not gonna be doing a farm market this winter because of COVID, but luckily she still does the CSA program and that's doing really well. And I mean, as you can see, she's got the greenhouse pretty well filled. So we're thankful for that. I might have to grab some of this kale before I leave. I'm at the back of the greenhouse and this is this is the wet wall and this gets used in the summertime for a cooling but the air comes through that and on sunny days in the winter time the exhaust fans up there will actually turn on to bring in cool air to cool it off just because it gets so hot. There's a few crops that thrive in the winter time like the spinach and mom can grow lettuce. Uh, it just takes longer because the days are shorter and like we said in the seeding and planting videos when she's doing greens or uh, like dandelion greens or Asian greens she'll just seed a little bit heavier so they get up to weight faster. I'm pretty sure these are dandelion greens. Yep. Basil, basil, bok choy. I'm grabbing some bok choy seeds to put in the desktop NFT system. I'll show you how that's doing here in a sec. Okay, we're back at my house and I have the pump all set up and it's running. Um, it wasn't that bad to finish setting it up. I did that the other day and it's pretty much just connecting the pump and the hoses and then connecting the emitter um, and then also I mixed up the nutrients and you just take a gallon of warm water and put in the nutrients mix it up and then add another half gallon of warm water to the reservoir uh, it's pretty quiet too which is nice and I have it under the grow light also here's the little lettuce seedlings um, I had them in my windowsill so I could really keep an eye on this rock wool so it wouldn't get dried out. But they got a little bit leggy so I'm hoping moving them down here will help them out and get them growing back good again. So now all I gotta do is just put them in the channels. And I can show you too, this is kind of what I was waiting for was these little roots. 
to come out. Hopefully that's focusing. These little roots to come out of the bottom there and you can see a couple of them so they're definitely ready to go in. So with the rock wool cubes, you pretty much just break them apart very gently. I'm used to the Oasis cubes now. Mom used to use these, but like we've said, they are good though. They do work really well. So what you want to do is just put it right in. You got to make sure that it is touching the bottom of the channel. That way it can soak up the nutrient solution. If it's not touching the bottom, the whole thing can get dried out and you'll come down here and you'll find dead lettuce. We don't want that. Okay. I thought we'd end the film with another quick little farm update. We got four new steers the other day, a little variety this year. We got a black Angus and a Hereford and then two Baldies. So the black Baldies are a cross between the Herefords and the Angus. And we just have Maya now. A nice family came the other day and picked up Big Guy. He jumped right in their car and was sitting right in the middle looking out the windshield. It was really cute and I'm just happy all the puppies went to good homes. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, I'll be putting out some new ones here soon. So be sure to subscribe and thank you for watching.